All right, so I, I forgot one last thing in lecture three. I wanted to see how this divergence can be calculated using differential forms. So to do that, um, I'm going to look at the fact that we, of course, have omega A wedge omega B equal to the, the flux form of A cross B. I mean, we know that. All right, so on the other hand, I know if I take the exterior derivative of the flux form of A cross B, I get the divergence of the cross product of these two vector fields, A and B, with the top form dx wedge dy wedge dz. Right? But on the other hand, I know I can take the exterior derivative of the wedge product of omega A and omega B, and by the graded Leibniz rule, I get d omega A wedge omega B minus omega A wedge d omega B. But hey, we also know that this is the flux form of the curl of A wedge with omega B minus omega A wedge with the flux of the curl of B. Aha, but this is nothing more than the divergence, not the divergence, rather the curl of A dotted with B and there's a top form I'm factor it out, minus the dot product of omega A with the curl of B. dx wedge dy wedge dz. So, but of course, these two things are equal. And so you can equate coefficient of the top form here to the top form there, and voila. The divergence of the cross product of two vector fields A and B is simply the difference of the curl of A dotted with B minus A dotted with the curl of B. Now, I can derive this using the Levi-Civita symbol and some simple tensor calculus without too much difficulty. But I wonder, can you? I think this is a very nice um, illustration of just how elegant this notation really is. We didn't have to work that hard to derive this. This is, this is not the easiest thing to derive if you just use brute force methods. Anyway, that's all I got for lecture three. Thanks.